Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have understood how to create a functional components in a React application. In this lecture, let us understand how to create class components in a React application. Well, class components are ES6 classes that return the J6. Class components extend the component class from React library. In case of naming convention, class components always start with a capital letter. Class component takes props if needed. Class component must have a render method for returning the JSX. Well, let us go ahead and let us understand all these points with an example. Alright. So, as per these points, let us create the class component. So, let us head over to VS Code ID over here. And look at here. I am using VS Code and browser simultaneously in the same window. So, that whatever the changes I do in the React application, that will be reflected in the browser right here. Okay. So, this is the good way to teach. So here I am using browser and window simultaneously in the same window. So in order to understand the class components, let's create a new file. So here go to src folder, go to components folder and within that let's create a new file. Let's call it as greeting.js. Next let me maximize this. Next within a greeting.js file, let us create a class component. Well, as I mentioned, class components are ESX classes that return the JSX. So here just type class and then followed by the component name greeting. And in case of naming convention, the class component should start with the capital letter, right? So you can see the G is capital over here. Next, the class component should extend the component class from the React library. So here let us have extend keyword and then React dot component and make sure that this react should be imported from the react library so in order to import that let us have an import statement import react from react library all right perfect next this class component should have a render method to return the jsx so here let us have a render method and within a render method we can have a return statement and then we can have a JSX code. For example, here let us have H1 element. And then let us say welcome Ramesh. Okay, perfect. Now we have created a class component. Next, in order to use this class component in other components, we have to export this class component. So here export default and then component name that is greeting perfect next let us use this greeting component in an app component so go to app.js file and here let me comment out this welcome component and here let us use greeting component so here greeting and make sure that greeting component is imported at the top all right perfect next save this file and look at here the changes in the browser welcome ramesh and if you go to the greeting component, you can see welcome Ramesh. So this is the heading displayed in a browser. Next, if I change from Ramesh to Umesh and save the file and you can see the changes in the browser, welcome Umesh. It means we have successfully created the class component. Okay. So look at here the syntax again. Class components are a ES6 classes and class component should extend a component class from a React library. And the class component should have a render method to return the JSX code. Alright. And in order to use the greeting class component in other components, we have to export it using export keyword. And in order to import this greeting components in other component, we have to use import keyword. Next, this greeting component is reusable. So we can use this greeting component as many as times we want in the React application. For example, here, let me use greeting component one more time and you can see the changes welcome Umesh okay next we can use props to transfer the data from parent component to child component so in our case app component is a parent component greeting component is a child component isn't it so from app component we can pass the data to the greeting component and we can access that data by using props for example here let us use name property and then pass the data let us say Ramesh and for this greeting component also let us use name property 
and then let us use name umesh perfect next in order to access this information we can use props right so let us go back to greeting component over here and here we are using class component so the props will automatically available in this class component we don't have to pass props to this render method okay so here let us remove this umesh and let us get the data dynamically by using props and in order to access the props we have to use open close curly braces and then this dot props so look at here in a class component props will automatically available we don't have to pass props to the render method so just access this props and then the property name name so notice here we are using this name property in a app component to assign the data and we are using the same property to retrieve the data from the props okay so this is how we can use props to transfer the data from one component to another component especially from parent component to child component next let us quickly summarize the component types we create a functional component using javascript or es6 arrow function that returns a react element for example here we have welcome functional component that we have created using javascript function and this welcome component returns a jsx code next we can also create a functional component using ES6 arrow function like this. For example, here we have welcome functional component that is created using ES6 arrow function. And on the other hand, here we have a class component that is created using ES6 class. And whenever we create a class component, that component should extend the class component from React. And this class component should use a render method to return the JSX code. Okay, so this is how the difference between you know functional component and class component next you may have a question like which component type is recommended to use well react team recommend to use functional components to build the user interfaces and most of the react developers prefer using es6 arrow functions to create the functional components well in this course also we are going to follow the same we are going to use functional components to build the user interfaces all right so whenever you work on react projects make sure that you use functional components to build the user interfaces and try to use ES6 arrow functions to create the functional components. Alright great. In next lecture we will see how to import and export you know components in a React application. Alright great. I will see you in the next lecture.